Today we're going to take a look at evaluating functions. So if you just take a look at the word evaluate, okay, we're looking for the root word value of the function at a specific number. I had to recall the f equation notation. So for example, it says for the equation y equals the absolute value of x, which is graphed to the right. Okay, it's not written in terms of a function. Um, when x is 3, okay, each element in your range corresponds to an element in the domain. So when x is 3 in this graph, right here, what's the value of y? 3. That point is 3, 3. You could also just substitute it into the equation. y equals the absolute value of 3, which equals 3. The same applies to the function notation. Okay, um, it says remember the equation y equals x in function notation is f of x equals absolute value of x. So you just switch the y with the f of x. But it all means the same. Okay, therefore the notation f of x indicates the value of x or the value of the function at x. x represents the element in the domain and f of x represents the element in the range. So right here, we can now look at our table of values. Instead of x, y is x and then f of x. Because in function notation, the f of x represents your y or your element in the range. Okay? And that's all stated here. So x, y is the same as x, f of x. You're replacing the y with the f of x. We can take that out. That's a typo that is stated above. So, for example, f of negative 2. f of negative 2 is asking for the value of y when x is negative 2. So when x is negative 2, go up to this point, what's your y value? So on this, e this graph, negative the point is negative 2, 2 right here. So when x is negative 2, y is 2. So look at the point where x is 1. So when x is 1, y is 1, because it's the absolute value. So f of 1 is 1. Example number 1, so here's just a set of ordered pairs. So given p equals the set of negative 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 3, and 2, 3, find p of negative 1. So it's asking... What's y when x equals negative 1? So p of negative 1 equals. So when x is negative 1, what's the value of y? And that ordered pair. Here's the ordered pair or the point where x is negative 1. So when x is negative 1, y is equal to 1. Let's just use this for another example. Um, what's P of 2? 3. We'll do one more. If you didn't get it the first two times, P of a positive 1 is also 3. Okay? Well, we always have a, a set of points given. You will always be given a set of points, but it may not be written out. It could be the picture like in number two. So a set of points can be given graphically. It can be given in a set. What I would do over here is if you're finding k of 1, down below or next to it, write the point where x is 1. That's what it wants to know. When x is 1, what's y? When x is 0, what's y? When x is negative 1, what's y? So you go over to your graph. When you have the point 1, when x is 1, that's the point right here, what's y? On my graph, it's the point 1, 1. So when x is 1, here's 1, 1. When x is 0, what's the point on the graph? 0, 1. And then when x is negative 1 right here, this is the point negative 1, negative 1. 1. So k of 1 is 1, k of 0 is 1, 
and k of negative 1 is negative 1. So if it's helpful to write the points, I would do that first. Okay? I think it'll get easier when you don't have the graph. So for instance, in number 3 it says the domain of h of t is equal to t squared minus 1. Um, and so it's specifying that the domain, because of parabola, this parabola here isn't just down one and then it keeps going. Isn't the domain all real numbers? So when it tells you this part, that's telling you a specific domain. Only from negative 2 to 2, it wants to know the range. So you can go to your table of values if you want. That might be easier than doing the math. It's up to you. So you've got to look at from negative 2 up to 0. So negative 1, 0. Or let's do some math real quick. So we'll, we sh we'll write what the calculator should have. So h of negative 2 means, to substitute negative 2 in for the t, negative 2 squared minus 1 is? Does anyone know in the calculation or computation? Negative 2 squared minus 1. So negative 2 squared is? 4, 4 minus 1 is 3. If you got a negative 5, it just means you didn't put, uh, yep, you got to put parentheses around the negative 2. So then, again, this is what you would see on the calculator. Um, let's do h of negative 1. So h of negative 1 means negative 1 squared minus 1. So negative 1 squared is a positive 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So on the calculator, you should see negative 1, 0. And then h of 0 means 0 squared minus 1, which is a negative 1. So all I did was take these numbers and plug them in for the t. Okay? So the range. What's the range going to be? Why such that? The issue is going to be, okay, it went from negative 2 to x, correct? And the graph is the parabola, which is above. This is including, is this only including these whole numbers or everything in between as well? Is it just including these numbers on this curve of a parabola? Or is it including everything between, like the domain is everything between? Can you answer that question? So here's the curve from here to here. What's my range? This is what you see on the calculator. But for the parabola, is the range just um, negative 1, I'll put a dot there, 0 and 3? Is the range only those three numbers or everything between those two numbers? So it does include everything between, so negative 1 less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 3. Four is pretty easy because we're just plugging in one number. So for part a, here's our function g of x. All we have to do is negative of x squared. So g of negative 2 just means to do negative of negative 2 squared. So this is a negative of a positive 4, which equals negative 4. So g of negative 2 equals negative 4. Go ahead and find f of 0. Plug in the 0, and what do you get? f of 0, Jason? 3 times 0 plus 5 is 5. So f of 0 is equal to 5. I just want you to watch something really quick. If I go to the calculator and I type that in, is that what type of function is it, first of all? Is it linear, quadratic, absolute value? 3x plus 5, is that, what type of function is that? If you were to look at the picture. What's that? Linear, yeah. So 3x plus 5. And then I go to, you can see, I'll show you it's linear first. Go to your table of values, and it wanted f of 0. So when x is 0, y is 5. 
So I'm okay with if you wanted to copy down the table with some, I would say at least three values on there. Uh, five would be great so that I knew what function you were typing in and just circle that on your calculator. Okay? So you can do it on the calculator, you can do it by hand. And then at the bottom, um, find F inverse of four. So what this means is x equals four, we're going to plug it into the inverse function. So you first have to find the inverse. First, find inverse. So I'll let you get to that while I give someone a note page. So switch x and y. So this is x equals y over 2 minus 3. Go ahead and solve for y. First thing you want to do to solve for y is add the 3 over to cancel that out. So we end up with x plus 3 equals y over 2. And then to get rid of the 2, we multiply both sides by 2. But you just have to remember to multiply the whole binomial. So it becomes 2x plus 6 is the inverse function. Now we can plug the 4 in for x here. So second, uh, substitute um, x equals 4 into f inverse of x. So now we're going to do 2 times 4 plus 6. So 2 times 4 is 8, and 8 plus 6 is 14. So f inverse of 4 is equal to 14. So on the back side, evaluating a composition of functions. So when you see this open circle, or when it's written with a function within a function, it's called a composition. So when you see this notation, you want to evaluate left to right. Okay? When you have this notation, you do the innermost first. So evaluate the innermost first. It's like a machine. Okay, you plug x into the f of x function, okay, and then you're going to get an answer. And then you take that answer, plug it into the g function. So you evaluate f of x first. We do it the same way, no matter how it's written. Then we take that answer and substitute it in the g of x function. So let's take a look at what we have for the first one. Part A. F uh, composition of g of negative 4 means we're going to do g of negative 4 first. We always do the inner, or the, we work right to left in this case. So g of negative 4 means I do negative 4 plus 1, which is negative 3. Now we take that answer and we plug it into the f function. So f of negative 3 just means I do negative 3 squared, which is 9. For part b, okay, we do f of 3 first. So I'll do that right underneath. f of 3 is 3 squared, which is 9. Then we replace the f of 3 with the 9, and we have to do g of 9. So g of 9 is just 9 plus 1, which is 10. Notice the functions are really easy computations. That's going to be the case. It's just you need to know what order you need to plug them in. Do I do the f function first or the g function? Okay. Below on 7 and 8, so let's do some practice in writing the inverse first. This is what was covered last class because we have to evaluate in the inverse function for both. They both contain that h to the negative 1. So let's find that first. So to find the inverse function, you take and switch. So x equals 2y plus 4. Solve for y. We first have to find the inverse function. 
Remember, this is really your y, so we got to switch, solve. So we subtract 4, then divide by 2. So the f inverse of x equals x minus 4 over 2. So let's do that on the right side first. Let's find the inverse function of this. So this is really y equals, so to find h inverse of x, we do x equals 5y minus 2. Add the 2, divide by 5, and the inverse function is x plus 2 over 5. You can reduce it to the fractions, but it's just easier to leave it like that when you're doing the evaluating piece. All right, I'm going to grab a different color. I'm going to slide this down a little bit. So now I'm going to evaluate. So on this question in orange, do I plug the 2 into the inverse function first or in the f function? Which one do I plug the 2 in first? The inverse function or the original function? Inverse. So f inverse of a positive 2, I just look right here, I do 2 minus 4 over 2. So 2 minus 4 is a negative 2, divided by 2 is a negative 1. Now I'm going to take that answer and plug it into the f function. So f of negative 1, I look back to the original function, and that would be 2 times negative 1 plus 4. And negative 2 plus 4 is a final answer of 2. look what happened. We started with a 2. We ended up with a 2. Will that always happen, do you think, when you do a composition with a function and its inverse? Think that's a yes or no? Is that you, Jonathan? He's the only one that thinks or he has an answer? So let's try to do it one more time. This one is also a composition with an inverse and its function, original function. So let's see what happens. We're going to do h of 123 first. So h of 123 means I do 5 times that minus 2. 5 times 123 is 615. And 16, 615 minus 2 is 613. Now I got to take that and plug it into the inverse function. So h inverse of 613, that's this function, I have to do 613 plus 2 all over 5. 613 plus 2 is 615. 615 over 5 is what answer? 100 and We're back to the original number. So that will always be the case. So if on your test, if anything, you forget what to do, if you're doing a composition of a number with its original function, the inverse, you'll always get back to the number you start with. Okay?